Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're all having a wonderful day or night. I hope you will enjoy today's video, so let's just get into it. Okay guys, I'm back and I have updates. So, he called me yesterday and he told me come down in 10 minutes. And I was like, okay. Um, so I went down and he immediately apologized. He acknowledged that he screwed up and he had like no excuse for it and that he wants to make it work because we have an incredible incredible connection and he really likes me so we ended up going like on a surprise date to the beach and we had an amazing time together we laid down we talked and and we bonded <sighs> and that was it and then he dropped me off Yes, she's the girl from yesterday that got ghosted at least twice. I posted her today with this update because I stand by everything I've said yesterday. As soon as that guy says to her I was only looking for some fun, you're moving way too fast and I don't think we should see each other again, she's gonna start posting videos how all men are trash. Like I'm responsible for her letting herself getting played like that. Hi Angel. If you are on the same boat as me, then continue to listen, and if you're not, then please just scroll and don't leave me any negativity. I'm absolutely not in the mood for it. I am so heartbroken. I want to love somebody so much. I want to be in a relationship so much, but things just never work out, and I know I'm not the only one, and there's so many people getting married, and I'm so, so, so happy for them. Truly, truly so happy. It just sucks sometimes when you have to wait for your turn. You're heartbroken, you can't find a man, and I'm heartbroken for you, and it's all heartbreaking. What could possibly be stopping the nice lady to find a man? Men, ugh, guys, nasty little creatures. Oh, maybe that? Nah, that can't possibly be why. Cause I know if I was a man looking to date and saw her video, that will make me even more attracted to her. Do you know what makes me sad for men, right? is that they never get to experience an everything shower. They don't get to experience the pure luxury, the feeling that you get once you've had an everything shower and you get into bed all cozy and you've got clean sheets and it's just so nice. They never get to experience that because what, they, what would they be doing in their everything shower? They're just in the shower with their two in one, three in one, four in one. It feels like it goes forever. Wash their hair and out they get. Or just wash their head if they're bald. Us girls, we get to have a full-on everything shower. If you're a boy, I'll explain what that means. So, everything shower would be head to toe, everything. Full body shave, exfoliate, hair wash, hair mask. Just literally everything that you could ever do in a shower. Just all at once. So every part of your body is scrubbed. It's clean, it's smooth, it's soft. And it's just delightful. I'm sorry you don't get to experience that. You're sorry? Imagine being me. I was crying only last night wiping my tears with my cat because I don't get to experience the whole shower. My bad, all, everything shower. And I'm not saying this video is cuckoo and you made a video. All I'm saying is if there was a top three craziness, this will probably make number two. Number one will be the obvious. I feel sorry for men, they don't get to experience PMS. I'll have to wait until tonight to cry about that. One of the top searches that people search to get to my videos is did dating apps destroy dating culture? What's funny is that a lot of us didn't have a dating culture before dating apps. Let me explain. When Tinder launched, I was just a freshman in college. That was 2020, 12. So any dating that I did previous to that was just people I met at school or like my rival high school. As much as I say on here, like, yes, dating apps suck and dating apps destroy dating culture, blah, blah, blah. And I do believe that to be true. What even was dating culture before that? And the people who were single at that time, I'm sorry if you're single now and still looking and you want to be in a, I'm so sorry. But can you help the rest of us understand what you were doing that was working previous to dating apps? People used to get married younger. So obviously people meet in school, people meet at work. Those are like the standard things. But like, 
what else were you guys doing? Because <laughs> the general consensus that I'm seeing is we want to go back to whatever that was. So let us know. Did the Gen Z dating coach just say dating culture didn't exist before Tinder or before her time? Maybe I heard that wrong. Funny you've mentioned Tinder, which was always meant to be an app for hookups, replacing the other apps that were meant to be for hookups. Not in theory, but in practice. MySpace, High Five, all the others. What did single people use for dating? Well, this is gonna make a few ladies mad. Men will say hey to you in public and you would say hi or f off. If you said hi back, that started a conversation. And at the end, phone numbers were exchanged. And also outside schools and workplaces, people used to meet at parties, movies, parks, clubs, bars. I know this may come as a shock, but we did have those before Gen Z. Our society calling women who enjoy similar things, basic bit, but a lot of men, their whole personality revolves around football and there's no name for that. This would be the type of person who watches a bad movie just so she has reasons to complain about everything, not just that movie. She would watch Titanic and cry about WNBA not making any money. There is no name for men watching football. Okay, so be the first one to invent a name for that. I'll even help you out with something that I just invented. Fans or football fans. Okay, now you try. One thing I'll never understand about living abroad, traveling, backpacking, whatever, is when you go home, why almost all of us feel this like overwhelming sense of no one gives a shit. You know what I mean? Like you have this amazing experience, whether you lived abroad, traveled, backpacked, whatever it is, you go home, especially if this is like your first time going abroad and then coming home. And then it's, it's like culture shock. Reverse culture shock is so real because you go home and your friends are doing all the same things. They're going all the same places. They're talking to all the same people. They're talking shit about all the same people and the same things. And then you come in with all of this like worldly knowledge and experience and just all these like crazy stories and memories that you want to share with them and talk about and they don't give a f I wouldn't do that, especially when you're trying to give me the same story 18 times. And yeah, people do worry about their own lives. They don't need to give you a cookie or celebrate you for traveling. Your biggest achievement is getting on a plane, flying to some place, laying by the pool, enjoying a mimosa or whatever you're drinking. Yeah, you don't get a cookie for that. Guys, I am waiting here in my car. I'm about to go out to sushi with the guy who approached me in Nordstrom Rack last week. Um, so I will update you, of course. This is what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a goldie jeans that are just black. You can't see them. And this cutie top. Yeah, I really don't care. Let's get you to the point already. <laughs> so bad. I have never been on a date that short in my life. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um hi word to the wise i don't care if your childhood home had a movie theater what i care about is the fact that you rolled your eyes when the server took the edamame away without asking yes that was it i mean she went on for two more minutes but that was the reason he rolled his eyes she heard on tiktok that the man you're dating is supposed to be nice to the waitress that was a trend for a couple of months and oh no it happened to her the man she was dating rolled his eyes Every time I see a nice car drive past, like, I, like, try to peek inside to realise it's always some old white man driving. To then realise where I live, it's only broke ways around. Guys, get rich. Get rich. I can't marry a broke man. Hey, listen, you didn't get the memo, I'll help you out. You are strong, you are independent, you make your own money, you pay your own bills, you don't need no man. Two more weeks until your paycheck and then you can act rich yourself for about a week. I feel like the longer you're single, the, the longer you're... Yeah, basically, dating apps are only for freshly single people because... I've been single for four years now and people talk to me on that and I'm just so rude. Like, what is the point of me being on that app? Like, I need to remove myself. This boy messaged me and was like, fine, I'll message first then. And I just put, as you should. Like, I don't have time or patience. I need to meet somebody in the flesh live and direct. I don't have an hour spare to find out if you're a freaking person. I also don't care about how your day is, see?
say I need to come off the apps. Or you need some common sense. And not just because the way you act, but also to realize that maybe dating is just not for you. You're gonna be exactly the same in real life too, not just on dating apps, so maybe just stay single. Or if you try hard enough and you're nice for five minutes, you can even get a cat. If they'll have you, of course. I'm an Italian daughter. Of course I'm a daddy's girl. Hey, I'm an Italian father. And I'll tell you, my daughter is a bit. Yeah, all right. This is gonna be it for today. As always, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, I still appreciate you for making it this far. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you in the next one.